So it's going to be black versus white. If the government is planning to come out with a white paper for the 10 years of misrule and economic mismanagement of the UPA, then a Congress's counter to that is a black paper to point out the 10 years of the NDA's economic mismanagement. Well, what is it that a white paper is all about? But more importantly, why now? Well, remember in 2014, Narendra Modi, who was then the Gujarat chief minister, had pitched a campaign against the UPA on the grounds that it was mired in many scams, the 2G scam, the coal scam. And Dr. Manmohan Singh was a weak prime minister, where the ministers and the greed became more important than fulfilling the aspirations and ambitions of the common man. For a party which had come on the plank of the arm, Admi, clearly they had been completely forgotten. So after 10 years, it's back to 2014 narrative because the India front and particularly the Congress party is planning to make it all about the mismanagement of the economy, how the inflation figures are high and how there are people who are not even getting the benefits and their job loss. 10 years is a good enough matrix and therefore this 10 years of white paper is going to showcase the fact that in contrast to Sonia Gandhi and UPA's 10 years, this has been a government which has touched upon everyone. It is not using the religion or the Ram Mandir as a diversionary tactic as is being accused of by the Congress and the opposition parties. It's going to talk about the fact that how India's stature globally has increased. We are becoming Atmanirbhar in key sectors like defense and our imports are also falling. But more importantly, big global players, MNCs like Tesla, like iPhone, all of them are opening shops in India because they now consider it a good positive investment hub. And that is the growth story. And also for a party which claimed to be Ahmadmi but never did anything for them, this is a government which has done, touched the lives of the common man, from woman empowerment by the Women Reservation Bill to triple talaq. And the fact is that now money is going directly into the accounts of women. Ujwala scheme, toilets being built, infrastructural facilities, houses, and so on and so forth. How our borrowings have fallen. That is because in the UPA times, the borrowings had increased, import bill had shot up, banking and insurance sector had also collapsed. And in this case, they are pointing out how they all become robust and how our import bills are falling and our export is actually increasing and how there is an economic growth story in all round capital expenditure, which is needed for infrastructural development that has also increased. But in stark contrast is going to be this black paper, which is scripted by all the top economic brains within the Congress party. And this is what they plan to do, do whole press conferences and make the point that all of this is a smokescreen. It's just a decover. The government is hiding the facts. If you go to the villages, especially in the post-COVID times, the claims of the government has not touched the people. Not everyone has got or benefited from the Ujwala scheme. Even if you provide it to them, the cylinders are very expensive. Only during election times, they are brought down. There are job losses. Companies are cutting uh, costs by uh, chucking out people. And more than that, you know, there are inflation, food prices, essential commodities. And they've become so expensive that it's out of the reach of a common man's budget. Black versus white, clearly the narrative for 2024 elections has been set.